Welcome back. I made a huge mistake. And now I'm caught in such a screwed up situation, I don't know what to do anymore. I just want advice, but if you're mean, I understand I made a huge mistake. This is a long story. Me, 23 female, and my husband, 26, have been married for around three months. But we've been together ever since my sophomore year of high school, his senior year. We've done everything together. When he went to college, we made sure that I would go to the same school. He even turned down a better scholarship to go to a school that I had a better chance of getting into, since he was one of the smart kids and I was one of the more average kids. And when he finished, he immediately started working so that he could support us and I'd drop out, because he knew I hated school. He works as a software engineer right now, leaving company unnamed obviously. Sorry for the long background, but I just wanted to show that I do love him with everything in my being and everything he's done for me, and I wouldn't give him up for anything. I stay at home and take care of the typical cleaning and cooking and house maintenance, so we have a good relationship and we both put in a lot of work to make sure things stay afloat. Before I get into this, I should say that my physical attraction to him wasn't the same as when we were in college. Ever since he started working, he started to work out less and doesn't come to the gym with me as often. He's not fat or anything, but it's obvious he doesn't have as much muscle and the things he had early in college like his six pack, which he knows I used to love, are long gone. Maybe less working out reduced his testosterone also, because the sex isn't as frequent. And when we have it, it's not like it used to be. Starting a couple of months ago, one of his better friends that I will call David started coming over to hang out. Usually I don't like his friends in our place so frequently, but me and David instantly clicked. David and I hit it off and my husband was so happy to see that I finally got along with his friends. But then as usual, he ended up going back to work and spending less and less time with me, which honestly might have been one of the reasons I cheated. When we were about to get married, he promised me we wouldn't fall out of touch like in the movies, and that he wouldn't abandon me for work. But that's exactly what I feel like happened. David started swinging by a couple of hours before my husband got home to wait for him comfortably, so we started hanging out. We did everything together that I felt like my husband should have taken the time to do with me. We binged Netflix, talked about so much, went out to movies, Whenever people saw us, they said I looked happier, and at that point, I think I was. David started swinging by to hang out with me more than my husband, so he came earlier and earlier, and soon it was just at the beginning of the day, as long as he didn't have class. He's working on his masters. One morning when he came by and we started to binge Netflix, I didn't have as much clothes on as usually because he came at like 9, which was slightly earlier than expected but I was already so comfortable with him it didn't matter. I only had a big shirt on and some underwear, and I didn't even realize until it was too late that I wasn't wearing a bra. So I felt awkward. Then David as a joke took off his clothes and only had a shirt and his boxers, and climbed into bed next to me saying it was undies time and he was abnormally close, but I ended up moving in even closer. He put his hand on my thigh, and I ended up moving to sit in between his legs. And before I even thought about it, he turned me around and he started grinding an erection onto me, and I kissed him. I didn't intend for it to go further than that, but he was everything that my husband wasn't anymore. He was still built, and I could tell he really wanted me more than my own husband had. So we ended up having sex. I trusted him, of course, so we never used protection. Throughout that day, and he gave me the opportunity to feel ways and do things I hadn't done in so long. I thought I would feel bad right after, but I didn't. I was only really excited that I was desired and wanted and satisfied again. Me and David continued this relationship for months, and I ended up giving him the nickname Hubby because I really felt like he was my true husband the way he treated me, but of course he started to get possessive like men do and this is where the huge problems began. Whenever we had sex, he wanted my wedding ring off, and I ended up losing it and my husband immediately noticed because I made a point of never having it off. But that was only the first thing. David told me to stop kissing my husband or really treating him like he was my husband at all, 
And I did it, and I treated my husband like shit because he manipulated me into believing he was a shitty husband and person for leaving me so alone. I went back on birth control, and we never used protection because he didn't like it. And I never objected because I just enjoyed the feeling of being taken again. I stopped kissing my husband. I put as much distance between us in bed as possible, and I made a point to never have sex with him no matter what. I called him fat and ugly when I got angry or was upset, and it just sent my marriage into ruins. David was still around, and I guess my husband realized how lovey-dovey I was with David because he started making accusations. And of course David got possessive again, so when my husband told him he couldn't come over anymore, he sent my husband months worth of pictures and videos and messages we had made, and sent each other as some kind of sick payback. When my husband got home, he was infuriated, and he screamed and threw things, and I had no idea what to do. And I realized that David didn't really care about me as much as my husband did if he was willing to expose me like that. He started yelling about how hard he was working, as if I didn't help around the house and he broke a lot of my personal items. He was crying in the corner and talking about how he wanted to kill himself, and I was so scared because he randomly kept lashing out again. He kept asking me questions, half yelling, half crying about how often and how long it had been going on, and I broke down and started crying too and told him everything. He looked at the videos on his phone getting angry again because I told David I loved him and that he was better than my husband and other things that insulted him. In the videos, he saw that we were having sex in our marital bed, and that we never used a condom, and that he always finished inside me, and I could see something in him just break, maybe because he was my first time back in high school, and I didn't let him do any of that until we were married. He kept scratching at his skin and harming himself in weird ways and insulting himself like I would insult him when I got angry and I was scared he was going insane. Thankfully, the neighbors called the police due to the yelling, although they took his side a little more than mine, and they asked me if I had somewhere else to stay, so I don't know if they hospitalized him or not. Now I live with my mother and am working part-time again, I regret everything. Though I still haven't been able to quite distance myself from David, because I think he really started to care for me once my husband tossed me aside and he's been here for me, David calls me wifey now when it hurts because I really just want my husband back. We haven't gotten officially divorced, but he won't talk to me or return my messages or anything at all. If I send a third party there, he just tells them to tell me to get a lawyer because he wants to divorce me. I don't know if I'll do well in the divorce since he paid for everything. And because of David, he has a mountain of evidence on me cheating. I really just want this all to be done and over. What can I do to get him back? And if I don't know, how will I do in a divorce? Update. After writing this post, I was able to get into contact with my husband's sister, and apparently he's not doing very well mentally. Apparently he hasn't been eating and has lost a ton of weight. She said all he does is work and sleep and maybe eat every other day. She said I also did nearly unfixable damage to his confidence, because now he's afraid to go out in public because he thinks people will see him as a joke. Honestly, I don't see how his mental condition is my fault. It's his response and his choice to do what he's doing. She still wants me to sign the papers and is threatening me with evidence that was sent to him by David. I'm going to hold off on any attempt to get him back until I can assure that he's not going to do anything drastic like on the night he found out. Edit. Husband has always been very forgiving, so please don't pretend like you know him better than I do. I didn't say I expect to get him back. I say I want to get him back though at this point, it's unlikely. It doesn't mean he doesn't have self-respect if he takes me back. It just means he would be a kind and forgiving person who realizes that everyone makes mistakes. I'm only still with David because I don't have anybody else. What am I supposed to do? I don't have anyone else, and David is actually being understanding and caring, and he's sorry for sending the pictures. I still want my husband back, but right now David's the only one giving me the emotional support. I'm still sleeping with him, but I would obviously cut off any sexual relations with him if my husband agrees to continue the marriage. If you genuinely feel remorseful, it's important to reach out to your sister-in-law and communicate your readiness to proceed with the divorce. As a gesture of respect towards your husband, it's essential to remove David from your life. While I cannot determine if you were aware the affair would happen beforehand, 
I can assure you that David did and orchestrated this whole thing to hurt your husband. You have the chance to rebuild what you once had with your husband, but only if you eliminate the toxic presence that David brings into your life. The consequences of his jealous and vengeful actions will undoubtedly impact you. Consider the fact that he engaged in an affair with his friend's wife, coercing her to remove her wedding ring and actively attempting to impregnate her. He even recorded these encounters as a backup plan. It's time to let go of everyone involved and start anew. Rest assured, you will survive this ordeal. Comments There was a lack of communication. I'm sorry, but you ruined your marriage. There's no fixing what you said or did. And even if there was a chance, you're still in contact with David. You still said all those hurtful things and basically gave David all he needed to show your husband he's better because you chose him. And the temptation started when you let David into the house with just you two. It's not rude to have said, hey, I don't feel comfortable with you here when my husband is working and leave it at that. Boundaries. How can you say you want him back when you're still with the person you ruined everything with? Put yourself in his shoes. Imagine how much you destroy everything for him. He loves you, and he did so much for you, and you're still with that piece of shit who ruined everything for you. You're honestly a piece of shit, too. I don't understand you people. How could you do so much to break the heart of the ones you love? Geez, you're immature. Marriage, career, family, bills, getting older, this is life. It'll be the same no matter who you marry. There will always be some guy who is fit and has no worries yet, and who will try to connect with you for the purpose of getting in your pants. This guy did the same. It will always happen. But don't fall for it because you're married. Marriage is a commitment, a promise. What to do now? I don't know. My advice to your husband if he asked would be to run. He and you should not have let temptation into the house to begin with. Find a hobby next time.